Hey folks, Tony Lockhart here. This video is a comprehensive tool that's gonna help you guys navigate the 3D camera features in Storyboard Pro. Let's go and dive in. Okay, so let's get going. Here we are, Storyboard Pro, and this is the standard default layout. I've gone ahead ahead of time and I've drawn in multiple layers. And within these multiple layers, I've got all of this artwork. So the whole idea is to separate all this and I made everything a different color so that way it's a little bit easier to tell what's what. So let's go and set up the interface. In the bottom right section, what I'd like to do is to turn on the camera view. And I also want to go and turn on the timeline. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the camera view and I'm going to undock this and then I'm going to hover over to the right and get it to seat over here. Let's go hide those layers and I'm going to turn on my camera mask which is down here so it only shows this little image of what I'm going to get when I finally go and render out my storyboard. Also I'm going to scoot this over to the right because I don't really need that much extra space to show this thumbnail. I'd really like to maximize my space in my timeline. So now that I've got that set up, let's go ahead at the top center. Let's turn on our 3D tool. So it says enable 3D for current scene. And what that's going to do is it's going to create some kind of a grid over here. So if I go off to the left and underneath this hand tool, if I go to the 3D navigation, what I'll be able to do is to rotate this world around. All right. One additional thing that I want to do is on the right side where I've got the panel info, I want to go and uh, click on this and I want to turn on the top view. This is going to be a handy tool to be able to use. All right, so let's quickly talk about navigating and then we'll go and explore this tool to go and manipulate the 3D environment. I like to have this timeline set up so that way I have maximized space because what I'm going to do is I'll add and delete camera keyframes over here. I want to be able to see what I've got over here in the bottom right and then if I go to the actual artwork and if I look directly downwards at it, you can see that I've got this 3D image but there's no real depth to it because it's all on one plane. So it'd be nice to be able to go and navigate this 3D area and then to be able to see what's going on in the top view because I can go and extend and push these things further backwards into space. By the way, I'm just rolling the mouse wheel up and down to be able to zoom in and out. And speaking of using the tools to kind of zoom in and out, with this tool enabled, the 3D navigation button, rolling the mouse wheel in and out or pressing number one on your keyboard and number two will either zoom in or zoom out. If you hold down the space bar, then you can click and drag and you can move some of these things around. And then of course, if you just let go of everything and then use the mouse to click and drag to the left or to the right, or up or down, then you can get your 3D set to be manipulated. So in this segment, what I'd like to do is to go and turn this flat surface into an actual 3D set. So what I'll do is I'll position the set in a way where I can kind of see everything at an angle. And then I want to make use of my top view as well. Uh, please note that I pressed the 3D button earlier in the video. So make sure that that's done before you try to do this because you won't be able to have this 3D environment set up. Okay, I'm going to go to the transform tool, the layer transform tool. And what I want to do is I want to select the furthest back layer, which is the lowest one in my hierarchy, layer D. And you can notice when I have that selected, there's a handle in the top view that allows me to go and drag this forward or backwards in the set. So I can also go and click back on my 3D tool, my navigation tool, and then go back to my transform. And then you can kind of see there's that handle again in 3D space. It's a little unwieldy, it's kind of hard to grab. And notice that it will accidentally select all of my layers. It's a lot easier sometimes to just go and work on this through the top view. 
Now, let me just reposition the camera so you can kind of see what's happening as I start to pull this back. So let me zoom this in. And then one other thing to consider is uh, pay attention to what's happening down here as well in the thumbnails, okay? We go back to the transform tool, select on layer D, make sure I'm in my top view, and I'm just gonna click and drag and move this around. So you're starting to see in the top view, it's going further away from this first plane where everything is set up. It looks like it's getting smaller in this view, but over here is what you're gonna get when you finally render everything out. Let's go do the same thing with C. So that's that second layer. At some point, if it goes too far, it's gonna go behind that blue layer. So I wanna make sure that it's in front. Let's go grab that yellow layer, do the same thing. Let's go push that back. And I can leave the, the red exactly where it is, or if I want to, I could bring it forward. So it's kind of at the same level where the camera is or backwards. And then of course, uh, going back to that 3D navigation tool, you can kind of see there's distance in between all of these visual elements right now. If you want to position your 3D navigation camera in a way where it's a top-down look, and then you can go back to the transform tool, select on your layers, and then you'll be able to go and manipulate them. Now also keep in mind that you can move them around left and right. So you can see what's happening in that bottom right segment as well. And you could also move them upwards and downwards and the handles are available over here as well. But let's just kind of keep them where they are. Let me control Z and get that back in place. All right, so this is finally it. Let's go move that camera around. So I'm gonna go and let me go to about a, I don't know, maybe a second into the animation. And what I want to do is hit the plus sign. And what that do, what that's going to do is it's going to give me a location for the camera. So with the camera tool selected, I'm going to go and select it. And I'm going to move that camera around. And you could see in this, in the camera view, you could start to see that it's getting like it's zoomed in because it's going a little bit closer to my 3D set. So I can move it to the left or to the right. I can also use the top view to move it to the left or to the right and give it a little bit of a rotation and maybe the slightest bit of downward tilt. You can kind of see it because I went and adjusted this red line, which will tilt it downwards. I can also go into the stage view, or my bad, the camera view and go click and drag this upwards or downwards. That little dot that's in the center, I'm just gonna click and move it. So that's probably a good place to start my scene. All right, so that's my first camera. If I go and I go to the beginning of the animation, my camera has be, been reset to what it is now. So since I'm at about one second in my timeline, let me go three seconds forward. So that's gonna take me to four total seconds. And what I wanna do is I wanna go and add another camera keyframe. So I've hit the plus sign. So what I need it to do now is I need it to change. So going back to my camera tool, I'm gonna go to my camera view. Let's go click and drag downwards. I can also use my top view to go and pull this off to the side, to the right. And you can kind of see, based on how far backwards or forwards you pull this, you can kind of be aware of what's happening over here. It's gonna go and do something. It's gonna either zoom in or zoom out. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a rotation. Not too much because you can kind of see over here, my set is broken. So you can see that the, the city has disappeared. So I just want to go back, scoot that over, and I think we're okay. So sometimes you can pull that camera in so you don't break the illusion of what's happening. So hopefully we're still in Chicago and that's probably good. All right. All right, so since I've got my first camera move in my 3D set and you can already start to see things moving around, look super 3D. What I wanna do is go a couple of maybe seconds forward. So it looks like I'm at five and 23 frames. Let's go ahead and add a keyframe. 
because I want it to I want it to hold and then slowly start to move and then I want it to hold again and then I'm gonna go to about I don't know close to eight seconds and then I want one more final keyframe and what's gonna happen is is I'm gonna move this camera and it's gonna pan off to the left okay so let me go to that camera keyframe go back to the camera tool and then I could use whatever tool I need for instance I can go and move this in the camera view I can go and either zoom in or zoom out in that 3d view also in the top view I could give this a little bit of a rotation getting into a little bit of trouble because the illusions broken so maybe I'm gonna go and push the camera in just a little bit and maybe there's something that's gonna happen here is the focus so as I scrub through I can kinda get an idea of what's happening and then to go and smooth out this curve what I could do is I can move this keyframe whether it's gonna favor the first or the last one I can go and take that keyframe and then what I could do is take this line give it a little bit of a curve and I can kinda soften that camera transition so all I've done is in the top view I've clicked on that path and by clicking on it you can see that it allows you to do a plus sign for a keyframe you can kinda see my cursor and it changes all you do is click and drag now it adds another frame inside your timeline and it changes the direction Let's go back and do the same with this camera move as well so maybe at this point I'd like it to favor the first frame and either it can zoom in or zoom out so I think I'm gonna have it zoom out just a little bit to kind of give it an idea of an anticipation so it's gonna not gonna do anything it's gonna come and move out just a bit and then it's gonna slowly start to come back in you can settle on those characters maybe they're gonna walk around and then finally we can go and the camera is going to move in just a bit. All right, so as we end this video, um, I just want to review a couple of concepts. Okay, so number one, I really think it's a good idea to set up your interface so it makes your life easy. Um, as you scrub through the animation, depending on your setup in Storyboard Pro, it will actually show you what's going to render. Sometimes it doesn't do that and you can turn it off. I find that just having this camera view here all the time as a tiny thumbnail is really helpful. Um, whether in Harmony or in Storyboard Pro, I like to have my timeline right at the bottom. It just helps me out. And then for something like this where I'm moving around a 3D set, sometimes it's really helpful to be able to have the top view next to it especially if you're gonna go and do any kind of layer animations and things like that because it gives you a lot of control over what you're trying to do all right so I hope that was helpful let's have a quick look at the reveal and uh, let me know what you think all right many thanks for watching go give this a shot